Hello everyone, how are you going? Today's video is about my Japanese style Zen garden. I'm so excited to share with you how I transformed an embarrassingly untidy area to a peaceful Zen garden with a Japanese rice fish mini pond. This is the area I worked on. The size of this area is about 8 by 3.5 meters. Sorry, it was super messy because we were building a new shed at that time and we had to remove all the stuff from the old shed and dump some stuff here. As you can see, the front side of the ground is lower. There used to be some bricks laid at the edge of the garden as a small retaining wall. When we concreted the pathway, they were all removed like that. The previous owner of this property planted six roses in this area and they were all different lovely roses. I also had three veggie garden beds here. I had Thai eggplant, chili and some herbs. This is how it looked before the project. So let's begin. The first step was clearing off the ground. I started with removing these roses. They were beautiful roses so I didn't want to throw them away. I pruned them at first. I pruned hard to reduce the size as they were quite big. I didn't know that roses had very long roots. I decided to keep them in the large pots until I find a new place to plant them. My veggies and herbs are not looked after as I lost the water supply while our new shed was under construction. But some were still growing, so I kept the nice and healthy ones. There were lots of pavers on the ground. Yes, I had to pick them all up to clear the ground. Alright, let's move on to my veggie garden beds. I love this Thai eggplant, but it's time to say goodbye. Pulling out something like this size wasn't easy, but I managed to do that by myself. At that time, there was one thing that always bothered my mind, which was these retaining bricks. I had trouble making decisions on what to do with them. The easiest way was simply placing them back to where they used to be. That means I don't have to work on the ground because I've already got the level of flat ground. But I knew these bricks wouldn't fit in the Japanese theme. So I decided to get rid of them and come up with some other idea to deal with the ground later. When we concreted the pathway, they attached some metal stakes on the edge. So I had to pull them all out. Back to the veggie garden beds. After pulling vegetable plants out, I started digging the soil out to empty the garden bed. Then remove the frame. I had lots of rosemary in my herb garden. I dried them and made a meditation spray. If you are interested to know how I made it, I have the video link in the description box below that you can check. I ended up transferring some herb in a pot to keep and moved the soil out from the garden bed 
and put the frames away. As I removed the papers, obviously I had to lower the ground. At this stage, I haven't designed my garden so precisely in my head, but I knew the ground had to be lower than concrete path so that later I could place pebbles on the ground. First, I moved the rocks away from my work area, but I decided to keep the rocks because they could be useful. Then, I started digging the dirt. I was planning to have a mini pond in this garden, and luckily I found a perfect fish for a small pond. They are Japanese rice fish. As I'm in Gold Coast, it gets quite hot here in summer. These guys are hardy and more tolerant of warm water than goldfish. I set up my mini pond and installed it here. It was the perfect spot for a pond at that time as it was in the morning sun. I've made a video of how I set up my mini pond so if you're interested in it, you can find the link in the description box below. Having some water feature in the garden is nice. This is definitely the main part of this garden. As I was digging so much, I realized that it's gonna be enormous amount of digging to lower the whole area. Also, it didn't look okay to dig down so much dirt at the house site. So I finally started to think about feasible plans. And I came up with this design. I divided the area in three sections with a bit of organic curves. They are different levels like steps. I wanted to avoid planting trees close to the house and the concrete path. So those two sections will have pebbles on the ground and I left the middle section for a little bit of green and stepping stones. I plan to lay rocks on these edges so that they can hold pebbles on the ground without slipping down. Following the design, I mark the curved edges on the sections with a marking spray. Then I started digging to lower the ground of the first section, which was the lowest part. This was a lot of hard work. I kept digging out the dirt and carrying it away. Basically, I had to repeat it until I got the level I wanted. It was still so much digging and carrying. Once I finished the bottom section, I moved on to the middle section. Then again, it was another set of battle against the dirt. I dug and dug and dug every day until I broke my little toe. Yes, it was ouch. I know I should have worn clothes to shoes, but it was a hot day and I didn't want to wear the shoes, so that's my fault. Anyway, I finished the middle section, that's how it looks now. I couldn't work for 6 weeks, now with a back on the ground, I had to pluck. As to the top section, I just leveled the ground and left the height as it was. Then I placed a weed mat. I laid a weed mat on the bottom section too. I trimmed the excess of weed mat off and ensured that it's covered the entire section. I placed rocks along the edge. It was quite difficult to select rocks to fit in a curved line. It's like a puzzle. Luckily, I had just enough rocks to lay along the edges. This middle section is green area. Japanese Zen Gardens usually have some moss islands. But I'm in Gold Coast, the sunlight could be too harsh for moss. So I decided to use other plants that can grow in full sun. First, I collected Mondo grass. It would look nice on the edge.
this is how it looked like after planting mondo grass. I added a bit of grain on the side of my mini pond. This spot is in partial shade. I picked this delicate plant called maidenhair fan. Then I added a touch of vine. I forgot to film that but I added a little bit of this plant called panda grass later. It looks like mini bamboo so it would be perfect with a mini pond. This was probably the most exciting time of the entire project. Finally, the beautiful white pebbles arrived at my garden. My husband and I spread the pebbles over the top and bottom sections. The white was pretty bright that we needed to wear sunglasses. After adding the pebbles, my garden made a massive progress. I used 2 cubic square meters of pebbles. I got these stepping stones from a landscape supply shop. I lay them on the middle section as I planned. But I realized that I walk more on the top section to access to see my rice fish. So let's move them to the top section then. This is a bamboo called Asian Hedge. I wanted some plants to hide my ugly electrical breaker box and major box on a brick wall. It would look nice if I directly plant it on the ground, but I need to keep access to those boxes. Also, I wanted to avoid planting bamboo too close to the house. So I decided to transfer it in a bigger pot and place it in front of the wall I added a little bit of bamboo fertilizer. And watered it. At that time, I had been looking for some nice garden statues. And luckily, my sisters-in-law gave me these beautiful statues. They are old and washed out, but I really like the quaint and peaceful feel of them. I decided to add some more plants on the middle section. I chose Nandina Domestica because I grew up with Nandina at my parents' place in Japan, so it's familiar to me. I planted it by the little pond which I was planning to add a bamboo water fountain later. Also, I picked this plant called Mariah Minamin. I thought it would look nice if I trimmed the tree into a bowl shape when it's bigger. Then I spread a compass over the middle section. Level the ground with a rake. Next, I collected turtle vine. It's a type of succulent and it can survive in full sun. I've got lots of turtle vine at my place and it always grows so well here. I love the delicacy and the color. I think its partial reddish purple is adding rustic taste. This plant is a great ground cover. I planted along the other edge of the middle section. I got some seeds too. It's rapture wort. I'm sprinkling it on the rest of the ground. This plant is known as green carpet and can grow in fruit sun too. So I'm hoping that it's gonna be my substitute for moss. After sowing seeds, I put bamboo skewers all over the ground so that my cats can use this area as their toilet. Now 
now we move on the most difficult part, which is making a bamboo water fountain. Luckily, I had a chance to get this big bamboo that someone threw away. I cut out the thickest part of the bamboo first. This is gonna be the main post. Then cut out hammer part. Unfortunately, I can't show you all the process of making it because my husband ended up heavily modified the structure of the base part by using actual metal plumbing pipes to increase the durability and to make sure it firmly set on the awkward position. But if you are interested in how to make it, this is called shishi odoshi and I believe there are lots of videos about it. I install a small solar pump in the fountain. There you go, it's my emotional moment. This was not easy to make but certainly worth it because it brought this area to the next level. This is my Buddha statue. I thought it might look nice for the garden if I spray it with white paint. So I tried it. Actually, I felt bad to spray my Buddha. It didn't look bad, but to me it didn't fit in this place nicely. Sorry, I have to place you here instead. This is our Bali style poolside area. I think this statue fits better here. I got some other ornaments given, but didn't look harmonized with this place. Japanese Zen Garden is based on the concept of finding beauty in simplicity, so I shouldn't fill up the garden with lots of ornaments. So some of the ornaments are put away, but I had one thing I really wanted to have in this garden, which is a stone lantern. I couldn't see any shop selling them nearby. But one day, I spotted this lantern at a garage sale of a deceased estate. It's old and stained, but I can tell it's a good solid rock lantern. So I bought it, promising to give a lot of love in my new garden. It's getting closer to the end of the project. The next thing I did was hiding the brick wall with bamboo fence. Since there are some objects like a window or electric box on the wall, I couldn't completely cover them. So I had to use the low fence. This screen fence is thin and see-through, so I needed to double the fence. I fixed the fence on the wall with zip ties. I added some bamboo posts to give the extra support too. My tato vine grew so much and took over the middle section. It's kinda cool but I want to trim down a bit to show the rocks on the edge and tile statues which are almost sunken in the turtle vine river. As a final touch, I decided to add a rake pattern on the pebbles, but I didn't have a Zen garden rake, so I modified my old plastic rake. What I did is simply cutting off some tines to adjust the width of the wave. Then I did test run.
the wave pattern was not as defined as it should be, but it wasn't bad at all. Well, it won't stay like this for a long time with my cats anyway. See? Alright, finally it's time to have a look at how this area turned out. My bamboo screen fans and bamboo water fountain became aged, but I really like them looking quaint. Now they perfectly match with my stone lantern and statues. I used to be embarrassed to see this area, but now I feel relaxed and happy to see my garden. As I am a foreigner in this country, it's nice to add a little bit of my ethnicity at home. I feel so comfortable and peaceful, especially when I'm watching my rice fish swimming in the mini pond and listening to the bamboo water fountain. I also love the way it looks in the different time of the day, different weather and season. Personally, I think it looks the best when it's wet with a bit of rain. I hope you all enjoyed my garden makeover and hope to see you again in my next video. Thanks for watching. See you soon.